hey, Pretty Girl Club, get your tea, get your popcorn, because this is going to be a good one. Welcome to the Psychology of a Skin Bleacher series. Um, this is going to be a whole series on this YouTube channel. So for those of you who did not see my video about Kelly Rowland, I did a little bit of dragging in that video. I got it out of my system. Um, but I really do want to dive into the psychology of the skin bleaching industry and people who are unambiguous or who were formerly unambiguous mono dark skin black women who uh, become light skinned and kind of see what their experiences are. So if you guys have not noticed, I kind of speak based off of what I have witnessed on this channel or what I've seen other people talk about. And so I made that video about Kelly Rowland and I made a small comment in the, in the comment section saying that like, if you are a skin bleacher and you went from being dark skin to being light skin, if you could please contact me so that I can, you know, like if you're willing to share your story, I would like to use it potentially in a series so that we can dive deeper into this. By the way, if you get triggered by skin bleachers, if you become sad, mad, I don't know, feel insecure, just get very upset about it, do not watch this video because none of my videos are supposed to be triggering to the point where it makes you feel negative about yourself or makes you feel bad about yourself. I understand that there are people who make different choices. Um, some people are going to call you self-hating, not just with bleaching, but just with anything. Um, different people make different choices. And the only reason that this girl was willing to contact me and give all of this tea and give all of this information was because she is trusting me to keep my YouTube channel and to keep this comment section a safe space um, so that she feels comfortable kind of exposing the pathology that comes along with a lot of women in the unambiguous mono community. So if you're one of those social justice warriors or those people who are like, oh, nobody should be doing this, um, please don't comment that on the bottom of this video because it's gonna be pointless. Like this girl who has already done this, like she's already done it basically. So nothing you guys are gonna do or say is going to make her stop doing this. But I wanna take a deep dive into this because a lot of unambiguous mono dark skin black women have been very afraid to talk about this topic. And if we want to overcome things like internalized colorism, texturism, or featurism, first we have to be able to identify it. And then we also need to talk about what leads people to get there. I have some notes on what she said. She did mention how when she was dark skinned, by the way, she went from Fenty 480 to uh, like Rihanna's skin tone. So like, you know, three, 300 or something like my skin tone. So she literally went from being dark skin and unambiguous. She said that people would tell her she looked more like how maybe like Naomi Campbell would look, um, in terms of features and stuff like that. So, but maybe a darker version of that closer to like Kelly Rowland's original skin tone, or maybe even Lapita or somebody like that. So going from that all the way to Rihanna's skin tone is a very uh, drastic change. And she did say that channels like Chrissy or Cynthia G exacerbated the problem for her because she felt like seeing all of these channels and social media accounts that kind of um, talk so much about how everybody was so colorist against dark skinned black unambiguous women. She said that watching that type of content as a dark skinned black unambiguous woman made her feel like, wow, if it's so different on the other side, like why would I not go to the other side? So for those of you who think that all of these mainstream colorism channels are like very helpful and like uplifting and empowering unambiguous black women. This girl that I spoke to last night said that she did not feel like a lot of that content was empowering. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and read the email that she sent me. And obviously she's remaining anonymous. She said, I am African American and I lighten my skin tone to a light brown shade. I identify as a light brown skinned woman and not dark skin, even though I was born dark skinned. I did not like being darker skin and had resentment from it. Okay, so this is something I talk about on this channel. Like a lot of the colorism content, um, their content is geared towards women who kind of don't like being dark skin or maybe their followers didn't have any opinions on their own skin tone. But if you've got all these content creators kind of teaching dark skinned women to not like their skin tone or kind of teaching them that um, their skin tone is gonna like hold them back or that guys won't like them because they're colorist and all that, um, that's gonna exacerbate the problem. And she did end up talking about that on the phone. But anyway, she says, I did not like being darker skin and had resentment from it. 
I envied the lighter skinned women because I always seen them as more carefree than us dark skinned women. The dark skinned women that I've seen were masculinized and had to walk a straight line. There is no room for error when you are dark. Being a tall and dark skinned woman was considered a double negative because I was seen as a trans and singled out for my looks. I was tired of it. And people expect the worst from you when you are dark skinned. I looked in the mirror and wished that I was born lighter. So I went to school, got a degree, and I knew I had to find a very good job to afford my skin lightening treatments. So later on, I'm going to talk about how she talked to me about the whole entire industry and how like, I mean, there are different ways to, I guess, lighten your skin. Some people use very cheap methods and that's how they like can mess up their skin. But this girl, when I was on the phone with her, she was talking about how basically the more money you have, the, the more smooth like your skin can look or the faster it can happen. Because I did ask her about Kelly Rowland and she says as a skin bleacher, she does believe that Kelly Rowland absolutely lightened her skin uh, using IVs. So she was saying that if people want to use IVs to lighten their skin, they basically, what they'll do is they will obviously have a lot of money and they'll go in to those IV drip bars like every single day and have this little IV thing in their arm um, to try to get a skin tone that's lighter. And so for the people who were asking about Kelly Rowland saying, oh, how could she lighten up, you know, within like a month or something like that if she were taking pills? Well, it's because apparently there are many different ways that people do it. And I guess the people who have more money, they can afford to kind of get that stuff done faster, but without having to use surgeries. So it's kind of like from the inside out. And by the way, this video, I'm not telling people to like do this or whatever, but I appreciate this girl exposing what has been hidden in the unambiguous community for so long. Um, because she was also telling me about how a lot of people in the unambiguous community do lighten their skin naturally or like slowly or whatever, and that they just don't talk about it. And so she was saying how a lot of people will go out of their way to shame those who do more of an extreme fast lightening because a lot of those women see it like your light skin tone is going to give you a higher status. And so I'm mad about it. She was talking about how a lot of the dark skinned black women who talk crap about uh, bleachers are women who sometimes get angry because they see it like you're joining the other side, you know, like you're joining the light skin side or you're joining the, the privileged side. And she was saying how that is one of the main reasons why people go so hard against bleaching. It's not because they themselves don't want to bleach themselves. She was saying that in a lot of cases, it's because they just don't want you to have access to this quote unquote light skin privilege um, that some of those women feel that they don't have. But let's get back to this email. She said, I looked in the mirror and wished that I was lighter. So I went to school, got a degree, and knew I had to find a very good job to afford my skin lightening treatments. I researched online and pretended to be an Indian woman looking to lighten her skin. I realized that it is frowned upon when you are dark skinned and want to lighten your skin to a lighter skin color. So I did this for years while in school, researching and gathering a plan. When I got a good paying job, I started buying supplements, vitamins, lotions, moisturizers, oils, and sunscreen. I used to spend a lot of money on lotions that did not work. The skin on the body is thicker than other places on the body. I did not consider this going into this. In the beginning, my skin looked a mess. I messed up a lot, but after the third year, I found a routine and products that worked and stuck with them. By the way, I did ask her on the phone how long she had been doing this. She said that she had been doing it for 10 years and that she became light skinned a few years ago. So she was starting off from like Lupita's shade and you know, over the course of about 10 years or maybe a little less than that, um, that's how she became light skinned or whatever. And by the way, I'm making this video because what I try to do on this channel is I try to balance out all of the videos that I make. So I, I did my dragging video of Kelly Rowland, and now I want to dive into the actual psychology of it and just look at it from an academic perspective. Um, I don't really care what people do with their body as long as they don't bash mine. This girl, when I talked to her on the phone, this girl admitted, she said that she actually very much admired light skinned women and thought they were very pretty and wanted to look like them. So you know how I say that a lot of people want to date us or create us or sometimes imitate us. Let's say you are mixed race or maybe it's your skin tone, hair texture or whatever. So she did admit that she admired this particular phenotype, kind of the light skin black uh, monoracial phenotype. 
But anyway, she says, the skin on the body is thicker than other places on the body. I did not consider this going into this. In the beginning, my skin looked a mess. I messed up a lot, but after the third year, I found a routine and products that worked and stuck with them. Every day, no matter what, I take glutathione, vitamin C, alpha lopic acid or alpha lipolic acid. I think that's what it's called. Hyperpigmentation supplements one times a day, not two times a day. NAC, L-cysteine, collagen, and vitamin E. I was getting frustrated with taking glutathione supplements because I was not seeing results. I started seeing results after the one year mark. I take a lot of glutathione and vitamin C daily to keep my tone. I don't take the recommended dosage it says on the bottle. I drink a lot of water daily and exfoliate every other day. I put my pro mix lotions that I mix together four times a week. I use a different lotion for the face. I have spent thousands of dollars on my skin lightening journey and no, I am not rich. I just could not go back to being dark skinned. I use a half cast oil and an extreme skin lightening lotion. I don't put it on every day because my goal is not to be very light. So she's saying she doesn't want to be like white. She specifically wanted like the light skin black look. She said, but this lotion is strong enough to stop the melanin. I cover up every night. Before going outside, I make sure that I have on sunscreen, SPF 70, sun bum spray, and sometimes I use the cream. This is a lifestyle, and I have met women and men on this journey who stopped altogether because of the products and how hard it is to maintain once a person reaches their shade. She says, when I was dark-skinned, men and women in the black community looked at me as if I was beneath them. So notice how she didn't say in the white community. She said men and women in the black community did this or looked at her as if she was beneath them. She said, now it is the complete opposite. People treat me different now. I have dark-skinned women talking about me out loud in public now who once knew me as being dark-skinned and also wanting to fight me. So she's saying now that she became light-skinned, she's having people who are like kind of exposing her or like talking about her and people wanting to fight her after she became light-skinned. She said, I am now a threat. I am not white passing, but I may go lighter than this down the line. I am not sure yet. But for now, I am going to stay at a light brown skin tone. I work remotely at my job, so I have never seen my coworkers before. I told my mom, and my mom simply said, do what makes me feel happy. I am in my 30s, by the way. I love my skin tone now and the way that I look. I was miserable and depressed being dark-skinned. I wanted to do whatever it takes to be happy and not deal with colorism. Again, I may go lighter down the line, but again, I am not sure yet. She said, many people use products that don't work or give them bad reactions. I used lactic acid in the beginning, but accidentally burned my arm because I realized back then that I must not occlude the skin. It cleared up and the scar is gone. Uh, I think she means she must not like burn the skin or something like that. She said, it cleared up and the scar is gone, but skin lightening is a lifestyle and not just putting on a cream and wanting to be lighter. I once went to a doctor to get an IV glutathione drip. So that's what she said that Kelly Rowland has had, or she believes as a woman who has bleached herself from Kelly Rowland's shade to Rihanna's shade. Um, she said that she believes that's what Kelly Rowland has been doing. But she said, I once went to a doctor to get an IV glutathione drip and the doctor who was a guy told me that NAC is better than glutathione. He told me that I would need to come back for three IV drips a week. He was hesitant to tell me, but I was honest with him that I was only getting the IV drip to lighten my skin tone. He also revealed to me that it would take about 20 sessions to see results, but it could also take long because my skin tone was deep dark. I decided not to do the IV drip. I have tried so many brands of glutathione over the years. So she's saying she didn't do the IV. Um, when I spoke to her on the phone, she said that for the people who are trying to do this, she said that people are going as far as like, uh, getting these IVs every single day. So this is obviously very expensive. And she was saying uh, people who are starting off at, I guess, Kelly Rowland skin tone, these people are, they're going in there every day for like 18 weeks to get a brighter tone that like looks natural or whatever um, without having all the spots on them. Like, you know how when you go on Google images, you see those uh, pictures of people with spots on their skin because they burn themselves from using like mercury and stuff. So after I saw this email, I was shocked that someone unambiguous was willing to 
basically admit this about herself and, you know, kind of spill the tea. So I ended up texting her. So I said, do you mind sharing your foundation shade and your country? Are you in the U.S.? Also, were there any stereotypes about light-skinned people that you started receiving? Or did your life change in any way? Like, did people become jealous or mad? Or did you realize your life didn't change how you thought it would? Also, how do you feel about women like Kelly Rowland or other skin lighteners who lie? Do you feel like lying is necessary or that it's a secret? By the way, you don't have to answer anything you don't feel comfortable answering. So she said, hi, I am Fenty240. And yes, you can use the email. Please exclude my mail and text now phone number. I am black American born and raised. Yes, I am in the US, no mixture, and have never visited another country before. And then I said, also, as a person who has been both light-skinned and dark-skinned, what do you think of the stereotypes? Do you think any of them are true? Also, can't you go back to being dark-skinned if you wanted? Based on my research, skin lightening is not permanent and the person doesn't have to become white. Do you fluctuate your skin tone depending on your mood, the season, or your hair color? Also, are you monoracial or multiracial? So she answered that she's monoracially black. She said, I get a lot of hate now. So she said now that she is light-skinned, she actually receives more hate than when she was dark-skinned. She said, before I was 480, like the Fenty shade. She said, it's so much to type. Would it be possible if I can call you so you can take notes from the phone? And then I said, uh, we can. I just may forget parts of your story or misquote you. But if you feel more comfortable talking, I can call you when I'm on my hike. And then I said, okay, Fenty 250, so like Doja Cat. So she corrected and said she's more like Rihanna. Um, and then she said, yes, dark-skinned women are mean to me now. I also have a friend whose skin lightens as well. So she's saying dark-skinned women are mean to her now that she is light-skinned. And this is a girl who used to be dark-skinned. She said that her friend can pass for a biracial mixed woman. She was very dark like me. It's a lot to share with you. We are both black American women. Skin lightening is not permanent, but you will never go back dark as before if you maintain it. And then I said, who was mean? Was it just people that you knew before or random new jealous people? And then I also asked her about uh, male centeredness and like if this had anything to do with men. She said, I am not male centered at all, but men said that I look different and that they like my new look. I had a dark skinned woman in my building yell at me to stop lightening my skin. I don't even know this damn chick, but yet she tells me to stop lightening. She said, I lie and tell people I have vitiligo. A lot of people who say they have vitiligo don't really have vitiligo. They just want to be lighter. And she also talked about how um, a lot of those skin creams, like the bleaching creams, I guess they actually just depigment the skin because they're so strong to the point where it actually does cause like white spots on the skin that look like vitiligo. She said, dark skinned women wanted me to suffer. No more suffering for me. So I ended up asking her more about her, her like perspectives and experiences with dark-skinned women. And she was talking about how she believes that a lot of darker-skinned, unambiguous black women were actually jealous of her going on this bleaching journey because she said a lot of the dark-skinned black women that she was around, they didn't want to feel alone in their suffering. And when she said suffering, she kind of meant like uh, colorism, like the colorism experience. So she viewed it like when she was becoming light-skinned, she was no longer relatable to those women uh, based on the color of their skin. And she also was talking to me about how a lot of the dark-skinned black women she was around would constantly talk about colorism, like making it their identity, like being a victim of colorism. So you know how a lot of people say, oh, you make being light-skinned your identity? She was saying that when she was dark-skinned, a lot of dark-skinned women would make colorism uh, more of their identity or make it more of a talking point just randomly, you know, just kind of bringing it up um, even though people weren't necessarily being colorist. So when I was talking to her on the phone, she was kind of saying it like she did not want to associate with that sort of struggle. Like she didn't want that to be her identity anymore. And she kind of associated um, that darker skin tone or like what other dark skinned women were saying. She kind of associated it with suffering from colorism. And part of that was because of the dark skinned black women she was around and also the types of online communities that she was in as well that were constantly talking about how, like how bad it is um, with the colorism. She said, I don't identify as dark skinned any longer. I identify as how I look now. I do not look bleached because of the supplements. My undertone is yellow. 
I have been dying to tell someone what I've been through with all of this. I need to get this all out. I am going to use my new privilege to my advantage now. I never had a privilege before. I always wanted a light-skinned woman's privilege. So she did admit that she wanted uh, this light skin privilege that a lot of dark skinned black women talk about. Um, she admitted that she wanted to experience the privilege and she kind of had a mindset of, you know, if this is something within my control that I can change, then, you know, I want access to this privilege. I said, do you feel more scrutinized now because of your light skin or because people know that you bleached? By the way, I'm going to go on my hike in 30 minutes and I can call you. She said, yes, light-skinned women have it harder. Oh my gosh, my life seems harder than before. She said, I stay in a black area and the women here are rude and evil. They give me nasty looks now, roll their eyes and pull their man close. So she's actually saying light-skinned women have it harder. Like as far as dealing with uh, the darker skinned black women. And she also told me on the phone, she said that the light-skinned privilege that a lot of the unambiguous women were talking about, they were really focusing on the privilege with black men. And she realized once she bleached herself that the, the quote unquote privilege or the exotification of your phenotype is more so with black men, but then you become disadvantaged when dealing with dark skinned black women. And so that's kind of what she's alluding to in some of these text messages about how um, the, the women would, you know, start being really mean to her or like rolling their eyes or women who didn't even know that she was dark skinned before kind of treating her the same way. She was saying that they were treating her the same way as like what I talk about on this channel, um, based on things like resentment or potentially wanting to have that phenotype. She said, I feel more scrutinized than before. So as a light skinned woman, she said that she's facing more scrutiny as a light skin than she did as a dark skin. So you know how I talk about that on this channel, about how a lot of darker skinned women think that they face way more scrutiny. Um, but I mean, when I look, and I'm not trying to discount that, but whenever I see people kind of like scrutinizing a person's looks, um, th to this day, it tends to be with lighter skinned women because now our society is very politically correct. So you can't really go and call a dark skinned black woman ugly or say she looks like a pit bull or like an animal. But I've seen people doing that with light skinned women. So this girl who has bleached her skin is actually alluding to this right here. So she said, but I don't care. No going back for me. I love being light skinned. I wanted this my entire life. I have an obsession with skin lightening. I cannot stop and will not stop. And then she said something interesting. She said, everyone secretly talks about it. But the truth is, I think some people don't have the guts to do it. That's exactly what I said. I said that I feel like a lot of the unambiguous uh, dark skinned black women's YouTube channels, they focus so much on bleaching and light skinned women bleaching. And I'm thinking, why are they tracking people's skin tones so much? Like why I've never tracked anybody else's skin tone. I've never like looked at someone and said, oh my God, they're half a shade lighter. Like, are they bleaching? What are they doing? How did they get lighter? Um, but when I spoke to this woman on the phone, she was saying, yes, that's because kind of almost the culture of the dark skinned black women she was around and she's African American. Um, there was an obsession and a fixation on light skinned women and like how is their skin so light? How did they get that light? And she's saying right here in this text message, everyone secretly talks about it. I know that this woman doesn't represent all of the women, you know, in America, but I thought that that was interesting. She said everyone secretly talks about it, about being lighter or about bleaching and that some people don't have the guts to do it. She said skin lightening is cosmetic it does not mean I am a self hater. So when I talked to this girl on the phone, the way that she was viewing skin tone was she was viewing it similar to how people view their hair, where they're like, it's just hair. Like, why do you care what I do with my hair? It's none of your business. It's not hurting you. Um, I'm not required to show my natural hair. She kind of had that same uh, mindset in terms of her skin tone, kind of like, you know, this is just the skin tone I choose to have. I don't owe anybody anything so I can look how I want to look. Um, she said that that was more her attitude. And then she said, I can't wait until you interview me. I said, yeah, I'm not going to record the interview or anything. I will just summarize it. And this is to protect her identity because it really does take a lot of honesty to admit all of these things that I've been implying. Cause I feel like when I say these things, people think that I'm being colorist against dark skinned, unambiguous women. When I kind of talk about the psychology of some of the behaviors that I've seen. And so, you know, this woman used to be dark skinned and unambiguous and she is saying the same thing.
that I've been saying. And then I said, overall, do you like being light skinned or did you like being dark skinned more? Also, what is your hair texture, etc.? Like, would you say you have a light skinned celeb lookalike? So she says that all of the rest of her features are still unambiguously black. So she has uh, 4C hair and, you know, the broad, I'm assuming kind of the broader Bantu features. And then she said light skin more, like she likes being light skin more. She said, I will never go back to being dark skin. I have 4C hair, but I can make it look like 4B hair with certain products. She said, I wish I can show you pictures. I look like a totally different person. People told me that when I was darker, I looked like Naomi Campbell. So I'm just imagining kind of a light skin version of Naomi Campbell. Oh, and then I responded and I said, you said there is no room for error when you're darker. Did people tell you that or what made you feel like the lighter girls were more carefree? For example, when you were dark skinned, did you find that darker skinned people discussed skin tone more and lighter girls did not, which was why you felt they were more carefree? Cause that's what I've noticed. Like, unfortunately, I've noticed that the main ones who kind of police light skins or police who's light skin and who's not, or like talk about light skin and kind of fixate on skin tone and color have tended to be dark skin, monoracial, um, unambiguous black women. Um, but that was just my experience. But I noticed when I said that here on YouTube, people are like, that's not true. Blah, blah, blah. Like nobody cares about skin tone. Nobody gives a fuck about your skin tone. And she is saying, oh my gosh, yes. When I was dark skinned, it is a thing for dark skinned women to bash light skin when it's all dark skinned women around. I am not pro black, even when I was dark skinned. I notice a lot of the hypocrisy in the black community. I am pro self. I noticed that light skinned women seemed more nice to me when I was dark skinned and dark skinned women were more mean to me. So she's saying when she was dark skinned, she fit in better with dark skinned black women. And then when she became light skinned, the dark skinned women were more rude to her just in general. So this includes dark skinned women who did not know that she bleached herself, just random dark skinned women. Um, and then she says dark skinned women have an obsession over light skinned women. And by the way, this is just her personal experience. Obviously we're not talking about all dark skinned black women or whatever. So I said, Light skinned women were nicer to you when you were dark skinned or when you were light skinned. Also, did other dark skinned people give you subliminal messages by making comments like your life is going to be harder as a dark skinned woman or XYZ people don't date dark skins? Like, is that a common conversation amongst dark skinned women? Okay, so she says, only when I was dark skinned, now that I'm lighter, they're not as nice anymore. I thought all light skinned women stuck together. But then I realized there are light skinned saviors out here who enjoy bashing other light skinned women. And then she said, yes, I heard a lot of negative messages throughout my life. And she's talking about uh, towards dark skins. She said, I heard a lot of negative messages through my life in and out of the workplace when I was dark. I got tired of it. And then she says, also, I felt like the guys I dated in my past did not go above and beyond for me. It was the older men who went above and beyond for me when I was darker. A lot of guys want light skinned women. They will fuck a dark skinned woman, but their dream woman is always a light skinned woman. So she's saying in her experience, this is kind of what she witnessed. She said, I had men tell me this when I used to stream on this hood site called tagged. Okay. So I can tell she's talking about uh, black men here experiencing so much colorism with black men. She said, I have decentered men years ago, by the way, but I do enjoy getting attention, even though I don't want to date. She said, when I was dark skinned, I was always in a competitive mode. I felt that I was in competition with light skinned women because that's what I had heard and seen a lot. So she's saying that a combination of dark skinned women around her talking so much about light skinned women, fixating so much on how it's harder for them and kind of like bashing them and rivaling them. She's saying that that's what she was around a lot. She said that was my thought process, but not anymore. She said, people wanted to keep me at the bottom along with them. She said, I don't think like this anymore, by the way. I said, did you see all the changes you wanted to see in your life after you became light skinned? Or do you feel like that was only one problem you solved and that you needed to focus on things other than your skin tone? Also, just to confirm, you meant that other light skinned women were not as nice to you anymore, right? Kind of like a light skin rivalry or something. She says, I felt like a burden was lifted off my shoulders. I'm no longer sad and depressed. I refuse to listen to dark skinned women complain about colorism any longer 
because I do not deal with colorism anymore. I think a lot of dark-skinned women do not want women to lighten themselves because they don't want to be alone in their colorism conversations. I got exhausted from hearing them always talk about how all the men want light-skinned women. I honestly think some of them should lighten so they won't be depressed at light-skinned women. So when I was on the phone with her, she was saying that the hyper-focus of YouTube channels like Cynthia G or Chrissy and other types of channels, and yes, she did name those two channels, she said that uh, YouTube channels like that, because they hyper-fixated so much on light-skinned women and on preferences and, you know, who does a guy want or who are the guys choosing and this, you know, the preference or the girl always gets the guy and ha-ha, her light skin couldn't keep him, you know, because there was such a fixation and a fascination into the romantic lives of light-skinned women and a fascination with the with the uh, sex lives of women who were light-skinned, she, she was telling me on the phone that this kind of made her like, well, damn, like this is making me more curious about light-skinned and light-skinned women and what it's like to live that life then if, it's, if there's such a big difference. So she was saying that because people were highlighting the difference so much that that kind of like, it, it made her look into it more or it made her kind of like, think about it more. She said, correct, both are not nice to me. So both dark skins and light skins have been not nice to her. She said, but many light skinned women see me as someone who will not bully them. And then I said, if men didn't exist and you no longer had to work for anyone, do you think you would have still lightened? Also, did you influence anyone else in your family or friend circle to lighten themselves? She said, yes, I still would have lightened because I did not like the way that I looked, to be honest. So this is a dark-skinned, unambiguous black woman admitting that she did not like the way that she looked. Um, she said, nobody in my family lightened their skin, only me. And then I ended up calling her. So I have some other notes on like what she said because she said so much. Um, so I asked her more questions and she did admit again, she said she wanted the quote-unquote privilege that so many people were talking about. So she said... You know, seeing all these dark-skinned black women um, kind of talking amongst themselves, because she used to be one of the dark-skinned black women, she said, seeing them talk amongst themselves about light-skinned women and light-skinned privilege and like kind of hyper-fixating on it, um, it made her feel like she wanted that privilege even more. So you know how I say on this channel, anytime people are constantly focusing on how much their dating life sucks or how much everything sucks in comparison to another woman, all you're doing is kind of pushing that woman to want to be her or you're, you're pedestalizing without realizing it. If you police it, you're pedestalizing it. So all of these YouTube channels that are constantly policing the dating lives of light-skinned women, they're policing what light-skinned women think about themselves, they're policing what preferences are doing, they're policing which woman is the preference, which woman is not, they're policing who's caramel, who's not. So when you police something and fixate on it, you are actually pedestalizing it and you don't even realize it and you don't even realize it. You're sending a subliminal message to those around you that, hey, this thing is, is worthy of fighting over. It's worthy of fighting over. And that's why I'm arguing. Kind of like that one woman where she had thousands of comments where they were literally arguing over something as silly as caramel or like a caramel skin tone. So I asked her like, what kinds of privileges do you think there are? Or like, what have you experienced? She said online, um, she gets more likes. So she said on social media, she gets more likes and that's what she wants. So she admitted that she wanted to get more likes or whatever. And then she says she felt like there were more haters that she experienced af after becoming light skinned. She said um, so much so to the point where she felt like she had to leave the black community um, in the sense that like, she doesn't really want to live around a lot of um, black people, like unambiguous mono darker skinned black people who were mean to her and stuff. And she said that um, on some of her posts, she would have to turn the comments off, like on Instagram and stuff like that. And she also talked about how being light skinned and being seen as quote unquote pretty actually made her want to be faceless. So have you guys noticed how even in the exotical space here on YouTube, a lot of us are like faceless and stuff because some of us, we experienced, you know, a lot of scrutiny or people will make comments like, well, you're not even that pretty or you're not even that cute. And so it's interesting that she, after becoming a light-skinned black woman, she's, in, she's admitting 
um, that basically she's had to turn off her comments and stuff. And she had told me on the phone about how there was more like hoopla and drama over how she looked. So similar to pretty girl problems is what I talk about on this channel. Obviously I know that you can be pretty and be of any complexion. Um, but she's just saying in her experience as a light skinned woman, you know, that's what she went through. And she also said that now when she walks in the store that she does not get looked at as suspicious. And she said, people say, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am. And she said that men hold the door for her, which I thought was interesting. Um, Cause I've never really, I guess I've never compared guys holding the door for me or anything like that. And then she says that she feels colorism is a thing, you know, it is real. So for the people who try to say colorism isn't real, she said she feels like it is a thing. And she said she felt like when she was dark skin, when she was a dark skin, unambiguous woman, she said that she would overcompensate for herself being dark. And she said that a lot of the dark skinned black women around her would do that same thing. Um, she said that when they were having conversations about beauty as dark skinned black women, a lot of women would kind of make comments like, oh, I'm dark skinned, but I have a big booty. I'm dark skinned, but I'm skinny. I'm dark skinned, but I have long hair. So she felt like with a lot of the dark skinned unambiguous black women she was around that a lot of their beauty was based on proving themselves or like proving their beauty despite their dark skin. And she said that she basically picked up on that subliminal messaging and it made her feel like, okay, so it seems like all the dark skinned women around me, um, kind of don't view their skin tones as beautiful or don't view it as it helping them. And she felt like the light skinned black women, they didn't really talk about their skin tones or make it like a big deal. She also mentioned on the phone about how once she became light skinned, she said that she personally felt more carefree because she didn't have to constantly talk about skin tone or focus on skin tone. Have you ever met those people where they are tracking how light or dark someone else is? They're kind of like tracking everybody else. And she also, um, she did admit that when she was a dark skin, unambiguous black woman, that she would have thoughts like, oh, you know, am I going to be the darkest one in the room? I wonder if there are going to be other dark skin people there. So she said she would like be in the bathroom, maybe at work or like before some sort of social event or something. And she would be thinking to herself, like, am I going to be the only dark person there? She also said that she did not see a lot of representation of dark skin, black women on social media. So you know how like they have the Instagram baddies or, you know, women who kind of post themselves in like fashion pictures and stuff like that. She said that she felt like she didn't see a lot of dark skinned black women kind of exhibiting that same confidence as light skinned women or um, other races of women. And she, she said that she basically felt like a lot of dark skinned black women basically did not represent themselves or like they weren't really as represented in terms of kind of flaunting their own beauty as opposed to like light skinned black women. And I'm kind of summarizing what she said. So then I asked her about self-hate. I said, you know, do you think that there's a way to tell if a bleacher is self-hating versus if they're not? She said, you can't actually assume that a person hates themselves just because they bleach their skin. And she started talking about how um, when it comes to people who bleach their skin, some people view it the same way as tanning. So they view it like it's just a skin tone. It's not a big deal. Um, but she was talking about how in the black community, especially with darker skinned black women, she said that they would be the most offended by her uh, bleaching her skin. But she was looking at it like, why are you offended by me put putting lotions on my skin if I'm not hurting you? Are you mad because I won't represent you? Are you just mad because I can no longer relate to you? Like, why would you get mad about a choice that someone makes with her own body? Um, so that was kind of her argument. She felt like the real reason a lot of the dark skinned black women around her were mad at her was because they felt like she was moving up in status with every skin tone that she became lighter. And so she was saying how a lot of uh, the dark skinned black women that she was around did not want her to bleach, not because they were actually pro black or anything, but it was more so because they didn't want to feel alone in the colorism fight or, you know, they kind of viewed it as you're joining the other side, you're joining the light skins. like. And she was saying that a lot of the dark skinned black women she had encountered, they were more like social justice warrioring, um, kind of like wanting to fight colorism and stuff. And she said that she did not want to spend her life being a part of kind of this social justice warrior thing. So that's what she meant when she said 
she felt carefree. She was saying that she didn't want to have to even think about skin tone and, okay, I got to represent this, or, you know, I have to like rep for all these other dark skinned black women. She said she didn't want to like have to think about that on a daily basis. Um, she said that she never felt like she fit in with the black community that she was around. She said that she felt like it was very depressing the more that she was uh, kind of entrenched in the black community. And so she wanted to kind of get out of it. And by the way, this video is not like actually judging it. And I'm not trying to tell people, oh, you should do this. Um, but I, I do think this is interesting to talk about and it should be talked about because this is something that a lot of unambiguous channels, they don't talk about it. I've noticed a lot of them, they just kind of bash they just kind of bash light-skinned women who are bleachers, don't talk about the dark-skinned black women who are bleachers, and then they don't go into the psychology of bleachers at all. So I asked her if she had an inferiority complex. She admitted that yes, she did. She admitted that she did have an inferiority complex about her dark skin tone. And then I asked her, did changing your skin cure the inferiority complex about your skin tone? She said, yes, it did because she didn't have the same skin tone anymore. She said that she decided to change herself rather than living with feeling inferior or fighting, you know, kind of constantly having to fight back against other phenotypes or constantly having to fight. Um, so you know those women who say things like, instead of fighting the beauty standard, I'm just going to meet the beauty standard. So it sounds like she had more of a mindset of, hey, I felt like the lighter skin tone women, um, they kind of met more of a beauty standard and and she did admit that she had always admired light-skinned women and found them to be very beautiful. And she also said that she would witness a lot of dark-skinned black women calling light-skinned women ugly or like saying that they're not that pretty. But she said that in her mind, she would be thinking, wait a minute, no, that woman's gorgeous. Like the light-skinned or biracial or mixed, mixed race women. So she said that she noticed that she didn't resonate with kind of like the women around her who were kind of saying that these mixed race or light skinned women were ugly. So from what I gathered, it sounded like she viewed a light skin tone as her internalized beauty standard. And instead of fighting against it or feeling inferior to it, she decided to meet her own internalized beauty standard. And that, you know, that light skin tone was like a part of it for her. And then I asked her about who exactly bashed her um, as a light skin woman. I asked her like, who bashed you? Who, who was the meanest to you? She said that it was mainly just pro-black men and pro-black women. Those were the only two groups of people who bashed her the most, uh, whether it was for being light-skinned or bashing her for simply bleaching because they feel like bleaching is obviously not pro-black. And then um, on my notes here, I have that she said that she had to move because her neighbor made a comment about her skin tone or basically like people around her would make comments about her skin tone as a light-skinned woman. She said that it's isolating being light-skinned, but not as much as being dark-skinned. She said that basically the reason that it's not as isolating as dark-skinned black women is because of that feeling of being the quote-unquote darkest or whatever. And it's funny because from my perspective, I've heard women say, well, dark-skinned black women are the majority in the black community and they are the blueprint or, and by the way, I'm not bashing any of these people, whether you're a bleacher or a pro-black person, I don't really care. But she was saying that bleachers trigger a lot of dark-skinned, black, unambiguous women because it kind of reminds them of feeling isolated. And she was saying how a lot of dark-skinned, black women, they don't want to be the darkest or they don't want to be the only dark-skinned person. And so if you bleach yourself and you become lighter, now um, some of them will take it as you're leaving them behind because some of them feel like, oh, well now I'm gonna just stand out as being extremely dark. And then I had asked her on the phone, like, do you feel less black on the inside after becoming a light-skinned black woman as opposed, as opposed to a dark-skinned black woman? She said, yes, she feels less black on the inside than she did before in terms of mindsets. So she, she did feel like she had a different mindset as a light-skinned black woman than a dark-skinned black woman. She had said that even when she was dark-skinned, she never felt as close to the black community. Like she didn't resonate with the women who were kind of like fixating so much on light-skinned women or kind of like talking shit, kind of sitting around and like just talking shit about light-skinned women or kind of hating on them. She said she didn't feel like she really resonated with that. She, she felt like, if anything, you know, if all these women are so obsessed with light-skinned women, this is making me want to be like them. She said basically it made her more curious about the lifestyle, for lack of better words, you know, the lifestyle of being a light-skinned 
monoracial black woman versus a dark skinned monoracial black woman. And then I asked her about stereotypes. Like, um, did you feel like you had stereotypes as a dark skinned unambiguous black woman versus, you know, not having those as a light skinned black woman? She said, yes, when she was dark skinned, people would call her ratchet. Like when she was walking down the street. And then she said when she became a light skinned monoracial black woman, people would call her ma'am. And then she said that she gets more stuck up stereotypes now as a light skinned monoracial black woman. And she said that people have stereotyped her as like not knowing how to fight more so as a light skinned black woman. Um, and then I asked her like, so why exactly did you do this? Like what made you, what made you go from thinking about doing this to actually doing it and like paying money and doing all that? And she said she did it because she stopped caring about black people's opinions. So she said like in the dark skinned pro black community, she didn't resonate with it and she just stopped caring about their opinions. And I had also asked her like, was the backlash um, as bad as you thought it would be? You know, cause I would imagine if you are Lapita Nyong'o's color and you go to damn near Alicia Keys color or Rihanna's color, I would imagine your friends and family would be like shocked. And she also said that she does not really talk to her family. Um, so there's no one for her to go see. Like there's no one for her to see at the cookout or things like that. So she was saying how there was, there weren't a lot of people who really knew her from before anyway, but she said for the people who did know her before, she just stopped caring about their opinions. And then I asked her why, like why did she stop caring about the opinions of the black community on bleaching? And she said because she kind of felt like the real power was in other races or in other communities and not the black community. And she said that she also felt like a lot of the dark skinned black women that were speaking against her, um, that they just wanted others to stay dark skinned so that they have more people to kind of fight on their side with them and to be kind of like a just a social justice warrior, um, like against colorism or like for dark skinned women. And then um, I kind of asked her about like exclusion, like if she ever felt like dark skinned black women were excluded or were not around. And she said that um, she has been to places, just like places in everyday life where there were no dark skinned black women. She had also mentioned how on social media, she felt like they were not as visible. And so it made her like, okay, well, if the dark skinned black women are kind of like not even visible or kind of not making themselves visible, kind of like what I talk about on this channel, not representing yourself, kind of begging others to be the representation, you know, this girl kind of, kind of felt like, okay, well, I'm just going to be on the other side or be on this quote unquote privileged side, or I'm at least going to see what it's like and then kind of decide if I want to go back dark or not. And as you guys saw from the text, she basically decided she did not want to go back to being a dark skinned, unambiguous black woman. And then another thing she noticed uh, once she became a light skinned black woman was she said that she couldn't use her real, her light skinned pics to comment on places like Cynthia G and Chrissy's channels. Um, she was talking about how, you know, once she was a light skinned woman, when she would comment in pro black spaces that she began getting attacked or she began being discredited or having people like randomly argue with her, very similar to what I talk about on this channel. And then I asked her about her experiences around dark skinned black men and women. Like, do they care? Do you feel like in the black community, they care more about how dark or light you are versus light skinned people or non black people. And she said, yes, she felt like dark skinned, unambiguous people, men and women cared a lot about how dark or light you are and compare skin tones. Like they'll compare even a dark skinned person to another dark skinned person and say, Oh, well, I'm a half a shade lighter than this person. And then she said that since becoming light skinned, that other light skinned people and other races have not cared and that she didn't really witness light skinned people, you know, just comparing like, Oh, so-and-so is darker than me. And, and that's kind of what I talked about on this channel. I've talked about how I've never like tracked somebody's skin tone. I've never really felt the need to do that because like, why? I don't know. Um, but this girl admitted that in her experience, the darker skin, unambiguous mono black people, she was around that they would, make random comments about skin tone and stuff. And she was just tired of it. And then I asked her about kids. Do you feel like your kids will come out with your old skin tone? She said she actually doesn't want any more kids. She said she already had like a child or something and she doesn't want any more kids. So she does not feel like that's a problem. And then I asked her like, 
does it get to you when people call you a self-hater? She said no, it does not get to her because she would rather be called a self-hater than go back to being a dark-skinned, unambiguous black woman. Um, that's that's basically what she said. Is like, I'd rather be called self-hating than not have these privileges, essentially, or I'd rather be called self-hating and at least I look like how I want to look versus you know, I let people bully me into looking how I didn't want to look. So the theme with this girl when I was talking to her on the phone was that she didn't want to look like how she did. And so she changed it and she basically doesn't care what people think of her changing it because she said the only people who cared about what she did with her dark skin tone were pro-black people or like maybe dark skinned black people themselves. And then I asked her, like, was it a whole journey, like a mental journey? And she said yes. And she was prepared mentally and just wanted to do what would make her happy. And she said that, you know, she felt like this would make her happy. And then she also said that she noticed that feminine dark-skinned women do not bash light-skinned women. She said that was another thing she noticed. Like, pretty women who were dark-skinned and, like, super feminine women who were dark-skinned, they didn't actually bash the light-skinned women. That's something she noticed kind of later on, it sounded like. Um, and then she also mentioned how when she would watch a lot of the Black empowerment channels, she said it was almost as if they wanted something bad to happen to light-skinned women. Um, or, like, they wanted something bad to happen to the light-skinned women who get the guy because they'll say, like, she got the same Black man or she should have chose better... Um, and how it's kind of similar to the red pill black men. And I was talking about that as well on this channel. I've noticed that a lot of the talking points that black women empowerment creators use against mixed race women or light skinned women, usually they sound very similar to red pill talking points. Like when you say you got the same black man, it's like you're saying choose better. You should have chose better. That's, that's what red pill guys say. This girl had also talked about how since she became light skinned, she said she felt like um, with people complimenting her, people couldn't really say it in public because, you know, it's improper now to call a light-skinned woman pretty because, you know, people are going to think you're colorist. So she said that people would compliment her, like, in private or they would, like, compliment light-skinned women in private, like, when nobody else was around because nowadays with the climate, people are afraid of being called colorist, texturist, featurist, or racist. And she also said that she secretly, like, distanced herself from the black community so that she could kind of in her mind, kind of like, I guess, change herself or live the lifestyle she wanted to live. She, she sounded like she did not align with the lifestyle or the mindset of the unambiguous dark-skinned black women that she was around. And because they were tying all of these negative things to their dark skin tones, um, she kind of felt more pushed towards just changing it. And I'm kind of summarizing it badly. If you're listening to this and there's anything you want me to correct, just let me know to the girl who I was talking to. Um, and then I asked her about dating apps. I said, you know, did you have a different experience on dating apps or what? And she said that when she was a dark-skinned, unambiguous woman, she felt like she had to do overly sexual things on dating apps, like showing her boobs, showing her butt. And then she said when she got lighter, she didn't feel anymore like she had to do those things. She said she would post plain pictures like a t-shirt or jeans or whatever. And she said that like as a light-skinned mono black woman, she said that she felt like she can now enjoy the attention she receives as opposed to before when she was a dark-skinned mono black woman. She felt like getting attention was more about proving herself or proving that she was worthy of that attention. So that kind of reminded me of some of the divesters who randomly bring up white guys like me better than, than mixed race women. It's like, we don't even care. It's like, I don't care who, who white guys like because I don't compare like myself to what white guys like in another woman. And so that was interesting that this girl says that. She said that she felt like for herself as a dark-skinned woman and that for the other women, that getting attention from men was more about proving to themselves that they're worthy of that attention or like proving to others around them, hey, I'm worthy of this type of attention. Uh, versus when she became a light-skinned black woman, she felt like she would just enjoy the attention. And then I, I asked her like, how do you think that unambiguous YouTube channels affect the self-esteem of unambiguous women or of dark-skinned women just in general like what about dark dark-skinned mixed women you know like how do you feel like those channels affect them and she said that she feels like those channels lower those women's self-esteem because 
They're talking about being at the bottom. They're talking about, you know, colorism holding them back, kind of like Normani. It's like, oh, well, the, they're colorists and her team is sabotaging her and, you know, she's not going to make it because of her skin tone. All these other people get to make it because they're light skin and they don't have to be as talented. So she was talking about how that sort of rhetoric actually lowers the self-esteem of women who are dark skinned in her opinion. And then she said um, she felt like a lot of dark skinned unambiguous women would deify light skinned women so much to the point where she wanted to be one of them. Because when you're constantly talking about someone of another phenotype, comparing yourself to someone of another phenotype, trying to outshine the beauty of another phenotype, you know, you don't realize it, but you actually are putting that on a, on a pedestal. And then she said she felt like when she was on her bleaching thing or whatever, that other dark skinned black women wanted her to stay dark. And she felt like they just felt alone or like abandoned with her changing her skin tone because she would no longer be relatable to them as a light skinned woman versus dark skin. And so I asked her, I was like, do you feel like you had more of a mindset of if you can't beat them, join them? And she basically was like, she wanted to see, yeah, like what it was like to be privileged and to not talk about skin tone constantly or to not talk about being a victim of colorism constantly or to not focus on um, colorism or to like not have that be a part of your mind. Like to not think about that. She said she wanted to experience what that was like to not think about her skin tone. Like, are people looking at my skin tone or like how dark am I compared to everybody else? That sort of thing. And she also said that the people who get outraged about bleaching, she said she felt like a lot of that is fake outrage, which I actually agree with because I, I've noticed that the same people who talk the most about colorism, usually those are the people who end up just bleaching themselves. And so this is why I've noticed that um, a lot of times the people who get the most mad, it has been people who secretly wanted to be quote unquote light skinned or wanted to live that life or whatever, or wanted that privilege. Um, but she says that in order to move up in this world, you have to play the game. That's how she viewed it. She said she viewed like her whole skin tone thing. It's, it's more of her just playing the game so that she can get what she wants out of her life and get the exact privilege that she has always wanted. I asked her like, how do you feel about dark skinned black people? Like, are you, are you a colorist basically? I didn't say it like that to her, but I was just asking her and she said she does not talk bad about other skin tones. Um, she doesn't see, like she doesn't talk negative about other dark skinned black women's skin tones, but she said that she is never going back to being a dark skinned black woman. She's gonna keep her lighter skin tone. She also said something interesting. She said that when she was dark skinned, if she did anything to move up, just like in life or whatever, that other dark skinned black woman would shame her. Um, and she said that when she started doing the bleaching thing, that they would shame the bleaching because they view it as she's moving up and they feel like she wants the privilege. And she said that some people would actually get jealous of that and they would feel like you can't have it. You need to stay dark. You need to not have this privilege. So she says that she did experience people getting jealous of her bleaching. Like people were getting jealous of her bleaching. And this is exactly what I have said on this channel. I genuinely do feel like there are some women who are jealous of those who bleach or they're jealous of those who get plastic surgeries or whatever because that person associates those things with having a form of privilege. And so they see you going after that quote unquote privilege, whatever that means to you. And then, you know, for some people that can make them mad because they feel like, how dare you do that? Who do you think you are? That sort of mindset. Um, and then she said another thing she realized after becoming a light skinned black woman is she realized that some men are jealous of light skinned black women as well. And she said she started experiencing um, men being jealous of her and like trying to humble her or, you know, trying to be mean to her. And she said that when she was a dark skinned black woman, that men would assume that she was pro black. She said that was another thing she did not like about being a dark skinned, unambiguous woman. Um, she is not pro black. She said she doesn't identify as being pro black. And she didn't like how people would stereotype her as automatically being pro black from being dark skinned. And she said that when it came to men hitting on her when she was a dark skinned black woman, she felt like a lot of dark skinned men assumed that she was pro-black and expected her to talk to them. And then she also mentioned how as she became lighter skinned, she felt like she was saying goodbye to her old identity as she got lighter. So she's kind of implying that before when she was a dark skinned black woman, she was identifying based on that skin tone or she felt like people were identifying her based on being a dark skinned black woman. 
And so as she changed that skin tone, she felt like she didn't have that, you know, she didn't have that identity. She changed her skin tone identity, for lack of better words, because that's what I've noticed as well. I've noticed a lot of uh, dark skin, unambiguous women on YouTube will identify people based on their skin tone. And so they'll say to dark skin mixed women, well, you're black, you're just black because your skin tone is chocolate. And it's like, well, no, not everybody thinks like that. Not everybody thinks that blackness is solely based on skin tone only. Um, but that is a, a theme that I've noticed as well here on YouTube. So I asked her about her personality changes. Like when she got light skin, did she change her personality or make it her personality? Um, she said that being lighter actually made her become nicer to others. And it made her realize that when she was darker skinned, she felt like she had to compensate for the dark skin and be a people pleaser. And she said, or she felt like because she was dark skinned and, and unambiguous, that people were going to be mean to her. And so she would be mean to them first sometimes. And then she felt like as she became a light skinned black woman, she no longer had those thoughts. Um, and she also said that she felt like she could be more bossy as a light skinned woman because she was not as focused on people pleasing or, you know, what do they think of my dark skin? She said, because she wasn't thinking those types of thoughts, she felt like she could just focus more, more heavily on what she wanted. She said that when she was unambiguously dark skinned, she felt like she was kind of told, shut up, you're ugly, you're not the preference, mainly by people in the black community, in the pro-black community. And then she said another thing she experienced once she became a light skinned black woman was that other light skinned women were more mean to her on social media or just more mean to her in general. I've noticed that as well. Some of my biggest detractors on this YouTube channel, if you go on Lipstick Alley, some of them actually are other light skinned women. And she said that one of the things that she has noticed is that other light skinned women now um, sometimes perceive her as like a rival. And then I was like, so how did it feel when you were around people who were, who knew you as a dark skinned woman, then they saw you and you were light skinned. And she said the backlash was not as bad as she thought it was going to be. She said that people would just be like, oh, she lightened. And then they would just kind of move on. So she said that those thoughts that she had of people like kind of making fun of her very heavily, it wasn't as bad as what she thought. Um, basically people would obviously know but then, you know, what are they going to do? Just keep telling her every time they see her, oh, you're lighter, you're lighter, oh, you lighten. Like, she said that eventually people would just stop and leave her alone because they realized that them saying it and calling it out it didn't affect her, you know, it didn't make her go back dark skin. So she said once people realized that them commenting on her bleaching was not going to make her stop bleaching, then she you know, those people would just stop or they would just move on. And then um, she says, sometimes if people ask, she will lie because she doesn't owe anyone an explanation or she won't answer because she can tell other people that she has a skin condition or she can simply just not tell them anything about her or how she became the way that she is, like how she became light skinned and stuff. She was saying how basically it's my body, my choice. That's sort of talking point. Like I don't owe you an explanation. Kind of like if people ask if you're wearing a weave or something, she was explaining it kind of like that, how she's not obligated to tell you if she's wearing a weave or if she's had a plastic surgery, or in this case, about the bleaching. And she said that in terms of vit vitiligo, a lot of people get vitiligo or they get those white marks from using bleaching creams. Another thing that this girl talked about when I was on the phone was she said that um, bleaching is very common in countries in Africa, so like Nigerians and stuff like that. Obviously not all. If you come in my comment section and say not all, you'll immediately be banned from commenting on the channel. Um, but she said that in her experience, a lot of the Nigerians did not help black Americans when it came to skin lightening. She said that when she started her whole bleaching thing or whatever, this is such a big deal to some people in the unambiguous community to the point where they will like gatekeep certain things so that other people like mess up their skin or so they can't like reach the skin tone that they're trying to reach or whatever. Like this is literally, some people literally view being light skinned as like a competition. So this girl was talking about how a lot of people in the African community would gatekeep it and how she would like comment on people's channels or try to join Facebook groups and they would not allow her in these groups or like not answer her questions and not help her. And so she said she 
had to like lie and create a fake name, like a fake profile with an African name. And then she said once she made a, a fake profile with a, an African name, then people started helping her um, to get like, I guess, secrets when it comes to like lightning, because this is such a gate kept and secretive thing in the unambiguous community to the point where um, sometimes people will lie and say, oh, it's just the sun or I'm just, it's winter time, but, but they're actually getting IV drips or taking vitamins and supplements so that they look like their skin just naturally got lighter. And this girl was also saying that people do it at different rates. So obviously Kelly Rowland is somebody who did it at a very fast rate. And she also said that you can go back darker. Like you don't have to stay super light. Like if you get very light and you don't like it and it's too light, you can go back and get like a little bit of a tan or like kind of lower the dosage um, or kind of like lower the amount of things that you're doing to get that light skin tone. But she was saying that this is something that is so secretive in the unambiguous community to the point where people will act like they're not doing it or they just won't talk about it or maybe they'll only share certain information because like, you know, that's how important it is to some people. Um, she said that she lives in a building with a lot of African people and she said that everyone in her building lightens. And she only knows this because she also lightens herself. And she said that they will look at her and they'll like stare at her really hard, kind of thinking like, oh, she must have lightened her skin. So she's saying that like skin lighteners, no other skin lighteners basically. Um, and she also said that some people wear like these sauna suits. So they will like put a bunch of lotions on their skin um, and then they will wear a sauna suit so that they can like sweat. And I guess that makes it like sink, sink in deeper and stuff. So she was saying how this is a whole thing where like, People have many different ways of doing it. Some people will be using multiple bleaching methods at once. And so they're they're not looking like uh, the people with all the marks and stuff like that because they're, they're trying to do it in, I guess, a more natural way. Um, so I asked her about her body. Like, do you have spots or anything? Or like, I don't know, burns? She said that her whole body is now light from her butt to her scalp and that it lightened because of the supplements that she was taking. And then she said like she can wear parts in her head, like her scalp is like light skin now as well. And she said that um, she went to get her hair braided at an African hairdresser lady and the hairdresser parted her hair and noticed how light skin she was. And she was like, what did you use? So this means that the African woman, she knew that she was like lightening her skin and it's so common to the point where she asked her what she used. And then this girl on the phone said that she found out that her hairdresser was also lightening, but she was very dark brown, like she was dark skinned. And she was saying how a lot of people from Africa, um, even though in America we view them as dark skinned, she was saying a lot of them actually started off even darker than that. And they sometimes do a little bit at a time. And so they're still dark brown, but maybe their skin is just not like jet black or whatever. So she was saying that people, they do it at different levels or like different, uh, different lengths of time. Like she was saying how, you know, not everybody's going to want to just be white or something or be light skinned overnight. Some people have different ways of doing it. Like maybe they're going from having an ebony skin tone to a mocha skin tone or chocolate or something like that. And then she said it is way more common in the United States than what people think, like amongst the unambiguous community, that bleaching is way more common than what people think. She said that if they're not using bleaching creams, a lot of people are using like vitamin C or different supplements to stop their skin from getting darker or to kind of naturally um, keep themselves from being as dark as possible. One thing I've noticed is that a lot of people have a fear of being perceived. So they have a fear of like you noticing the difference in them or kind of like exposing them. So she was talking about how that's part of the reason why a lot of unambiguous dark skinned people are so like, they don't want to say anything about this because they don't want to have to admit that like they want to be lighter or that they want to be light skinned. But this woman that I talked to, she admitted that she did want to be lighter and she didn't like how she looked or whatever. And you know, she's like, if you call me self hating, then whatever. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting about how she was saying that the bleaching thing, it's way more common in the unambiguous community than we think. Uh, this includes unambiguous African-Americans, not just people from Africa. And she was saying how a lot of people will just gatekeep it and be very secretive with it. And they'll try to blame it on other things. And even if they don't have the lotions, you know, they're doing other stuff like the knack and the glutathione and all that stuff. 
Um, you guys know how I feel about this. I don't really care what anyone does with their body as long as they don't bash mine. However, I am going to call out the hypocrisy in the black community because they love to call out when people are bleaching and that person is light skin. But I don't see the same energy for people who are dark skin and unambiguous. And so this channel leaves no stone unturned. Um, everything I come across, like anything you guys recommend for me to talk about, I'm going to give my commentary on. This channel is very nuanced. If I mess up on any of my videos, usually I'll remake the video or I'll make another one the next day. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to start diving into the psychology of this. I do still have this girl's phone number. It's like a fake phone number or whatever and her email. But what do you ladies think? Have you ever come across unambiguous people who were uh, maybe bleaching and lying about it or they were policing other people's skin tones? Because I know that for me, there was one friend that I had in high school and she was dark skin. You know, she was like a chocolatey color, like a milk chocolate. Uh, so some people might call that brown or whatever. But anyway, I saw her a few years later and she was no longer chocolate. She was like maybe just a little bit darker than me. She was maybe like cinnamon, that sort of skin tone or like a caramel. Um, and I remember taking a picture with her. And then I remember when she uploaded the pics on Facebook, I was thinking, oh, wow, I never I never realized she was that close to my skin tone this whole time. Like, and I didn't think anything of it. But now that I'm hearing about this thing, it's, it's making me wonder like, oh, I wonder if some of my friends throughout the years or if some of the unambiguous women I knew, I wonder if any of them were like doing any of this stuff. And um, like I said, I don't really care as long as you're not bashing people who were naturally born light skinned or you're not saying, oh, you got the same black man or you're trying to like shame them. Um, I am going to I am going to still drag if I see hypocrisy, though. But what do you ladies think? Let me know in the comment section and I'll talk to you next time. Stay pretty, ladies.